Polar bears are strange animals, and they just get stranger the more you think about them. On the face of it, their English name seems to sum up bears that live in polar regions pretty well. But actually their Latin or scientific name of Ursus maritimus may be a better title for them. It means sea bear or bears of the sea, which may actually be their perfect name. They are not the only bears that live in the Arctic, with both black and brown bears living and breeding well into these regions as well. And what truly distinguishes them from the other bears is how much of their lives revolve around the ocean. The vast majority of their diet contains marine animals, and while not pregnant, polar bears can spend more than half the year never walking on true land, living on the sea ice. They are a land creature that has adapted to live on top of another ecosystem and become one of its largest predators. They are bears of the sea. In evolutionary terms, polar bears are very young animals, especially for large mammals that usually have long pregnancies and can take a long time to reach adulthood, which slows their evolution down. Their closest relatives are brown bears, and they are descendants of a population of brown bears that needed to adapt to the extreme environment that exists out on the Arctic sea ice. But they are closely related enough to brown bears that, although rare, polar bears are still able to reproduce and have fertile offspring with North American grizzlies. Finding ancient polar bear bones to study their evolution is quite difficult, because a lot of their remains are lost at sea when the sea ice melts in the summer. But the oldest physical record of their existence is a jawbone found in the Arctic island of Svalbard that was dated to around 115,000 years ago. However, genetic evidence shows their history goes back much further than this. Studying brown bear and polar bear DNA seems to point to polar bears becoming a separate species around 350,000 to 500,000 years ago, which is a blink of an eye in evolutionary terms. It makes sense that these polar bears may have evolved around this time because the Earth was seeing a brief warming period. This would have been during the Ice Age, but geological evidence shows there was an interglacial period, or a small break in the Ice Age, from around 50,000 years ago. There was a substantial reduction in the sea ice around Greenland at this time, and the presence of tree pollen on Greenland shows that it must have been more forested at some point. This may have made at least certain parts of the far north, like Greenland, far more hospitable to brown bears, creating passage much further into the Arctic than where they exist today. When the temperature began to drop again, this could have caused the polar bear population to become isolated or just force them to adapt quickly. They have evolved fur to the point where it at least has the appearance of being white, and under this fur have increased the thickness of their fatty layer for better insulation. They have reduced the size of their ears and tails to prevent heat loss, but grown their paws so they can spread more of their weight out to be able to walk across thin ice, their paws being one and a half times the size of a brown bear's paws. Taking the date that polar bears diverged from brown bears with the average generation of a polar bear would mean that all of these features would have appeared in polar bears in around 20,000 generations. But these features aren't even the most impressive adaptations polar bears have made. Although adaptations to the cold in a such a short amount of time are impressive, on their own they are not that unusual compared to other animals that have evolved in a similar way. What distinguishes polar bears from other arctic species of animals is how quickly they adapted to being at home at sea. They went from presumably being very similar to brown bears to semi-aquatic creatures in an incredibly short amount of time. They can hold their breath for a very long time. The upper limit isn't known, but they have been observed staying completely submerged for over three minutes. They also have developed webbing between their toes to move more efficiently through the water. This, along with other features, allows them to swim to 60 miles in a day. Semi-aquatic mammals are common, but they usually feed on small animals. Polar bears hunt large marine mammals, primarily targeting seals, but they even hunt small whales somewhat regularly as well they have evolved to become major predators in what is essentially a marine ecosystem in under half a million years. For polar bears, shifting to an all-meat diet wasn't simple. All other bear species are at least omnivorous, and although it varies a lot in the season and region, brown bears usually have a diet that is mostly made up of plant food. Study of the polar bear genome has shown that some of the most heavily selected for genes after their separation from brown bears are to cope with the changes they have made to their diet. One gene that has mutated a lot in polar bears is known as the ApoB gene. In humans and mice, ApoB codes proteins that carry fat and fat-like substances like cholesterol through the blood. 
In polar bears, this gene has nine mutations, and these mutations aren't found in the same genes in brown bears. This extreme selection suggests an important role for this protein in the physiological adaptations polar bears have made. It makes sense that polar bears would need to improve their ability to clear cholesterol from the blood, with their new diet filled with marine mammal fat. However, polar bears aren't just newly evolved carnivores, they are also carnivorous animals that almost exclusively hunt other carnivorous animals. This is actually very rare in the animal kingdom, however more common in marine ecosystems. It is also important for polar bear evolution because there are additional adaptations that had to develop to live this way. As we all know, energy travels up the food chain, with the consumer having its energy and nutrients taken by a predator. Adding another predator at the top that eats another predator changes things. One is that this top predator is reliant on an incredibly large population of consumer animals at the bottom of the chain to get enough energy, which is one of the reasons polar bears are so vulnerable to small changes in climate. But it is not just energy that is transported across the food chain. There are also certain minerals, metals and chemicals that become more concentrated in the animals as you go up the food chain. Predators usually have higher tolerances to these substances and so can eat food that may be toxic to other animals. As polar bears are predators of other predators, they have evolved an astonishingly high tolerance to heavy metals and vitamins that would easily be harmful to humans. Seals consume retinol, also known as vitamin A, from fish which is then passed on to the polar bears when they consume seal flesh. And it has been proven that polar bears have considerably higher tolerance to retinol. So to survive in some of the harshest conditions known on earth, a group of omnivorous generalists that acquire food in many different ways change their bodies in rapid time to tolerate the new environment. And it turns out that for bears to survive at the top of the world, they had to basically invent a new niche, creating a truly unique way of life not seen in any other animals today or in the past. And this makes polar bears a testament to the adaptability of some animals. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.